Hey everybody, this is Paul. So in the next couple videos I'm going to show you guys how to search through a linked list for a specific item and I'm going to show you guys how to do that using recursion. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, I think in this video I'll just create a linked list so if you guys are really comfortable with that already then you can just skip to the next video but uh, yeah so right now I'm just going to create a linked list really quick and uh, so first thing we need to do when we're creating a linked list is we're going to create uh, basically tell our program what to expect when we type in the word node so we're just going to create a struct call it node and then put some uh, variables in here we'll put a data variable that can hold an integer and then we'll put a node pointer and our node pointer is going to be called next so if you haven't seen me do this in my previous tutorials basically I'm just creating some object called node and that node can uh, basically hold an integer value inside of it inside of its data variable and it can also point to another node so basically it just has two parts inside of it it's got a place to hold some data and it's got another part that points to another node so now my program knows what the word node means whenever I type it in so now that we've got uh, our node defined what we want our nodes to look like let's create a few node pointers and so we just do that by typing in node star that's uh, basically the data type for node pointer uh, that's how uh, C++ recognizes it and so node star we're gonna say node star n is equal to new node and so this uh, basically creates a new node and it creates a new node pointer called n and it makes n point to this new node so n is now pointing to a new node and we're gonna create a couple more nodes we're gonna call one head and we're gonna make that point to whatever n is pointing to and we're gonna create another one we're just gonna call it t and we're gonna make that also point to whatever n is pointing to as well so now n head and t are uh, node pointers that are all pointing to this new node so let's go ahead and fill this new node with some data so we're gonna say n arrow data equals one so now we've placed the value one inside of this new node that we created and we could have said head arrow data equals one t arrow data equals one that would work too so I just picked one of them and so now we've got this new node and it's holding the value one so let's create a list and we'll attach basically this will be the front of the list this new node right here and then we'll attach it to uh, a bunch of other nodes and we're gonna do that by creating a for loop and so we're just gonna do a new var variable called i an integer variable and uh, we're gonna have it start at the value 2 and then as long as i is less than the value 10 it's gonna go through this for loop and at the very end of the for loop it's going to increment itself or add 1 to itself so if you don't know what a for loop does that's kinda what it does I'll explain it one more time really quickly basically we start with the value 2 i is equal to 2 at the beginning it's gonna do whatever we put in the for loop at the very end of the for loop it's going to do i plus plus which basically adds 1 to the number i so i starts at 2 does all the stuff goes through at the end it changes to 3 because of this and then it evaluates itself it says am I less than 10 and if it is it goes back through and kind of just repeats the process and so this is basically gonna send the numbers 2 through 9 uh, through this for loop and just kinda make it do whatever code is in here so basically what we're gonna do is the first thing we wanna do when we enter our for loop is we want to create a new node and we wanna make n point to that node so we did that right there so n is now pointing to some new node and we need to fill that new node with some um, data so we access the data part of that node and we just say that it's equal to i so i changes every time we go through the for loop so the first time through i is going to be equal to 2 so 2 gets stored into that first node and so that first node is actually the second node in the list because this node up here is going to be the first one so so let's kind of think about this so we've got we've got t and head now pointing to this original node and n is now pointing to if this is the first time through the for loop it's pointing to a new node so we want basically this first node to point to this new node that n is pointing to and so the way we can do that is we can just say t arrow next 
equals n. And uh, basically, this works because t is going to be one step behind n every time. And uh, once we do that, we just go ahead and update t. So then t equals, uh, we'll just make t equal n as well. So basically what's happening here is at the beginning of the for loop, okay, t and n are pointing to the same thing. So they're pointing to the same thing and then n changes to, now it's pointing to a new node. It puts some data in the new node and then t makes it, so now t is pointing to the previous node by the time we get to this point and then it makes that previous node point to the new node that n is pointing to and then once that um, happens then t now points to the new node as well by saying t equals n. So that right there should uh, should build on a linked list. So we should have the values one through nine on this list. And the one last thing we need to do with this list is we just need to say n arrow next. Whoops, n arrow next equals null. And so basically we're ending the very last uh, part. We're gonna make uh, the last node in the list. We're gonna make his next part point to nothing. So now that we've got that, let's just go ahead and uh, test it really quick and make sure that uh, it's set up like I think it is. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a while loop here. And let's see, we're not using t anymore, so we can just say t equals head. So now t is going to point to the front of the list since we never updated the head pointer. So t is now pointing to the front of the list. So now as long as t is not equal to null, remember null is at the very end of the list, then we're basically just going to print out whatever value is in the data section of that node that t is pointing to. So right now t is pointing to the first node, and so the first time, <clears throat> first time it goes through here, we're going to do a cout statement, and we're going to print out whatever the data is in that node that t is pointing to, and then we'll print out a space. And uh, then once we're done with that, we want t to point to the next node. So then we say t, let's see, t equals t arrow next. And so now basically t is just going to kind of keep moving on down the list until t finally passes through the list and then is pointing to null. And so as long as t is not passed through the list, it's just going to keep printing out the data in the next uh, node. So let's go ahead and just test that and uh, make sure that uh, I built the list correctly. So let's go ahead and build and run it really quick and uh, make sure that uh, we have the numbers one through nine in the list. And so there they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like our linked list is built correctly. And so, okay, so I'm running out of time with this recording. So now that we've built the linked list um, in part two, I'm going to show you how to build a recursive function and then search for a value inside this list. So stay tuned for the next video. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial. And uh, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.